Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to discuss the HARPC. HARPC stands for Hazard Analysis and Risk-Based Preventive Controls. This is one of the new provisions of the Food Drug Administration Food Safety Modernization Act. All future food safety plans in the United States and companies exporting products to the U.S. will have to be in line with HARPC instead of HACCP. The major difference between HACCP and HARPC is that the classic HACCP is inadequate to control or mitigate hazards and a risk-based approach is needed to control them effectively. Let's take a look on the acronym of HARPC or pronounced as HARPC. H stands for Hazard, A Analysis, R Risk-Based, P Preventive, C Controls. HARPC is not a global standard but an updated United States standard incorporated into the Food Safety Modernization Act or FSMA on July 4, 2012. However, the Food Drug Administration issued a proposed rule implementing the hazard analysis and race-based preventive control provisions of the FSMA Act on January 2013. HARPC requires virtually every food manufacturer, processor, packer, and storage facility to identify food safety and adulteration hazards associated with their foods and processes, implement controls to minimize the hazards, verify that the controls are working, and design and implement corrective actions to address any deviations from the controls that might arise in a food safety plan. Everything in a HARPC plan must be properly documented and must conform to Food Drug Administration standards and definitions surrounding facilities, controls, hazards, and the adulteration of foods. HARPC requires its food facility to document all aspects of its plan periodically, review it, constantly maintain it, and document its verification steps. HARPC Requirements What are the major tasks that food company must perform to comply with the hazard analysis and risk-based preventive controls provision in the Food Safety Modernization Act? So let's take a look on the summary of HARPC steps. So the first step is hazard analysis. The second is preventive controls. Under the preventive controls is our prerequisite programs like process controls, food allergen controls, sanitation controls, and recall plan. The third is the monitoring. The fourth step is corrective actions. The fifth step is verification. The six steps is receiving controls of facilities supply chain program. A seventh step is the record keeping and also it must be required to be reanalyzed if the system works well. Step 1. Conduct hazard analysis. The HA in HARPC stands for hazard analysis and addresses the core intent of the law to identify hazards due to the specific foods or food ingredients in the food or due to the various processing, manufacturing, packing, and holding steps applied to the foods. Once identified, the company must evaluate its hazard to assess its probability of occurring and severity of the injury it would bring. This step is designed to prepare the firm for identifying the steps necessary to minimize or prevent the hazards from arising. To identify the hazards company must consider the following. Known or reasonably foreseeable hazards, biological hazards, chemical hazards including radiological hazards and physical hazards. 
Step 2. Risk-Based Preventive Controls The RPC in HARP-C stands for Risk-Based Preventive Controls. This portion of HARP-C requires companies, whether foreign or domestic, to develop and implement a series of risk-based controls to significantly minimize or prevent the identified hazards to ensure the safety of the food it manufactures, processes, holds, and distributes. Examples of types of preventive controls include sanitation procedures at food surface contact points, sanitation of utensils and equipment, staff hygiene training, food allergen control program, recall plan, current good manufacturing practices, and supply chain controls. Step 3. Monitoring of Effectiveness HARPC requires the food facility to establish and implement a written monitoring program, which ensures the firm is conducting regular evaluations of the facility's control measures to determine that the preventive controls are working. Food Drug Administration will evaluate the firm's monitoring system to identify inadequacies in either the methods of monitoring or the firm's record keeping. Step 4 Corrective Actions The company must establish and implement written corrective action procedures that will go into effect if preventive controls are not properly implemented. There is a question regarding preventive control or food safety plan's effectiveness. The records are incomplete or other discrepancies in implementing the food safety plan. The corrective action procedures must include the following steps. Identification of weak spots in the controls. Identification of ineffective controls. Identification of new hazards. Performing necessary steps to reduce the likelihood of recurrence. Evaluating the processed food for safety. Prevention of adulterated food from entering commerce. Step 5. Verification HARPSI requires food facilities to design and implement verification steps to ensure that their HARPSI plans including the hazard identification and analysis, preventive controls and control measures, monitoring and corrective action steps are operating correctly to prevent or minimize food safety and adulteration hazards. Verification steps should be sufficiently robust to ensure that the selected preventive controls are adequate. Monitoring is occurring properly as defined in the plan. Appropriate corrective actions are taken. Potential food and food processing hazards are reduced. Periodic reviews are conducted at appropriate intervals so that the HARPC plan remains working and takes into account new and emerging risks and hazards. Step 6. Receiving Facilities or Supply Chain Program HARPC gives flexibility to receiving facilities controls on raw materials. If supplier or a third-party entity implements controls to manage the hazards associated with raw material or other ingredients, the receiving facility does not need to establish its own preventive controls itself, but can rely on that of the third party of supplier through a risk-based supply chain program. Every receiving facility needs to set up a risk-based supply chain program to make sure that the relevant hazards are appropriately controlled by its supplier or third party entities. In summary, the contents of the supply chain program must include identification and use approved suppliers, determining and conducting suppliers' verification activities, conducting other facility or non-suppliers controls of hazards, or reviewing another entity's verification activities on the hazards. 
the supply chain program must be written. The receiving facility needs to develop written receiving procedures and document the supplier's verification activities. Step 7. Record Keeping and Documentation One key development under HARPC is its new requirements related to record keeping and methods of documentation that are now mandatory for food manufacturing, processing, packing and storage facilities. Previously, under the Bioterrorism Act, Food and Drug Administration could only require a food company to maintain records that enabled food to be traced through the supply chain. Now, HRPC and the supply chain provision under Food Safety Modernization Act required that records and documents related to food hazards and process control systems be established and maintained for no less than two years to cover the following types of steps. The monitoring of the preventive controls, the corrective actions, testing results and other verification steps designed to ensure the preventive controls are effectively minimizing or preventing hazards, supply chain program, and trainings. Step 8. Requirement to Reanalyze After developing and implementing an adequate HARPSI plan, the food facility must periodically evaluate its food safety HARPSI system. Under HARPSI, the facility must reanalyze its plan. Whenever there is significant change at the facility that might increase a known hazard or introduce a new one every three years if no other significant changes occur. Additionally, HARPC requires the facility to perform a new hazard analysis and implement any new necessary preventive controls before operational changes occur. Any changes must be documented in the firm's HRPC records. If no changes are necessary after a reanalysis of the HRPC system, the firm must document the basis for that decision. Rest and Benefits As with any food safety requirement, rest and benefits can take on a variety of forms. The benefits of HRPC compliance include reduced risk of food drug administration enforcement or action, increased food safety and consumer protection, better defined and more transparent manufacturing processes, increased supervision and controls over suppliers, increased confidence from buyers and partners. Compliance with HRPC is required under United States law. An adequate HRPC plan will require a thorough assessment and proper diagnosis of the condition of a food facility including the good, the bad, and the ugly. Companies can expect to discover food safety problems during the HRPC establishment and implementation process. These problems may be related to the physical plant like equipment, building structural integrity or machine quality, procedural steps like exposure of food products to the elements, temperature controls or lack of monitoring methods, or personal issues like staff hygiene, staff training, or unclear protocols. Companies should expect to unearth some potential liabilities during the process, which brings into focus of the importance of ensuring that the partners you choose to assist you in developing an adequate hardship plan are bound with the strictest level of confidence. Thank you for watching. If this is your first time in this channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell.